Hey guys, my name is Masterfighter, and today I want to talk about free and open source software and the views on Linux from different angles. Sometimes, not often, I get the age-old question from fellow IT enthusiasts. The question goes, would Linux be right for me? The answer to that question is another question. Are you willing to learn? The thing about Linux is that Linux is a very hands-on operating system. You don't really need me to tell you that, but it is something that needs to be said. Even if you have only used Linux, and you have been using it for 20 years, I guarantee you that you are still learning new things every once in a while. And the reason why is because you learn that Linux is more than a desktop operating system. We may use it as such, but causation is not equal correlation. Linux for the past 20 years has hovered around a 2% market share in desktop operating systems. Yet the vast majority of the world's servers run various Linux distributions. Most of the world's cell phones run on a fork of Linux in the form of Android, and we even see it in most embedded devices like smart TVs, routers, almost anything that isn't a desktop or a phone yet has a screen is also likely running some form of Linux. Yet here we are, the elite few who brave the challenges that Linux as a desktop may face us. It's true that there are those of us that live in the JustWorks distros, but there are those of us that go far beyond that. Some of us going so far as to even daily drive from scratch Linux systems, bless those masochist souls. The DIY distros are clearly a lot of work. At the bottom level is Arch Linux, a binary distro that gives you just shy of the bare minimum amount of packages that have a functioning system by default. The packages base, Linux, and Linux firmware have no bootloader. You just get the kernel, systemd and the GNU core utils, which is essentially just Linux from scratch without having to compile everything. It goes as far as a stage 3 Gentoo install, the most common form of Gentoo user, where you must compile your own kernel. The end game is Linux from scratch, which is not so much a Linux distro as it is a bare bones Linux system, of which does not even come with a package manager. Why do we do this? Why do the DIY guys love to create these DIY systems and proceed to daily drive them? As a DIY user, I promise you that given long enough, you will eventually encounter a problem and then proceed to figure out that problem, only to repeat ad infinitum. We love to learn. We love fixing things ourselves, but why? The answer can be one or many. Some of us do it for a love of free and open source software, dubbed FOSS. Some of us do it for security reasons, some of us do it for work-related reasons, but one thing is for certain, you were not given Linux, you chose Linux, and Linux chose you back. Given the option of either Linux slash BSD or Windows and Mac, you chose the operating system that we all love. The thing is, many people do not think much about the operating system they use, however, many of those same people do not understand security, privacy, or what it is like to use an operating system that they truly own and control. Many people do not need Linux, and conversely, many people do need Linux. However, many do not realize it. Who are these people? Those of us that live at the computer need Linux. Anyone who is using a computer for several hours a day knows that issues are likely to crop up, and that the longer you have issues, the less time that you have to complete whatever task you have. The thing about Linux is that, yes, you can have issues, that take time to fix. But generally, once an issue is fixed on Linux, you are pretty much set for a long time before you need user intervention. This is because you are in control of the operating system. Windows is not like this. Windows likes to update itself whenever the hell it wants. It will install whatever it wants without your permission. It blatantly ignores common security practices, such as being a multi-user operating system that puts you in the cockpit as an administrator 100% of the time, a decision that contains 94% of the attack surface that Windows has. Let's not even mention the absolutely bloated nature of Windows, an operating system that even when installed cleanly will contain many undesirable programs that not only slow your machine down, but spy on you. They spy on you, and why is that? The answer is because one, they want to sell your data, and two, they have backdoors and zero days for various government agencies around the world to be able to perform surveillance on you. 
a blatant invasion of privacy that you willingly give up just by using Windows. Mac OS is only better in the performance and security department, but arguably the privacy of Mac OS is even worse than Windows. This is because of the egregious nature of Apple, a corporation that has a market value of over $3 trillion. Linux does not have this. Linux does not need this. Linux is an operating system by the people, for the people. We are community driven, not corporate backed. We avoid vulnerabilities and malware through our love of free and open source software. Free is in speech, not as in price. And as long as you get your software from official repos, you will almost never have to worry about malware being installed on your system. Your browser alone is more dangerous than anything that lives in the Linux community itself. The Linux community is often seen as a cult, both by those outside the Linux community as well as those who are more aware of the views that those outside the Linux community hold. And the thing is that this is kind of true. The Linux community is a cult because we do see Linux in a religious manner. And religion and worship, by the way, does not have to apply to a deity. We often talk about and partake in FOSS. We even try to convert our fellow IT enthusiasts to Linux. Out of love, not malice. This is something you see in other operating systems like Windows and Mac OS because the truth is there is no such thing as a Windows and Mac OS community. They are not community-driven products. They are backed by corporations whose greed knows no bounds. If given the choice to either close their business or kill half the planet's population off, the Linux would be the latter would be taken by nearly every public company in the Fortune 500. We live in an age where life is taken with a grain of salt. Man has lost what it means to care and respect thy neighbor. Your life has seen as worthless amongst teeming billions of people. We take for granted the things that we most often use in life, and we should strive to break free of the grasp of corporate entities in the biggest and most effective ways we can, instead learning to coexist with them. Linux and Libre software is just our way of doing it. If you have never tried Linux before, I really suggest you give it a try. Linux Mint and Fedora are two great places to start. And while, yes, you might have to get your hands dirty every once in a while, but the same goes with Windows and Mac. It is the inherent nature of computers. But once you get your workflow cemented, you will see why we evangelists run to the hills about our software. For those apps that only run in Windows, we have the option to use Wine, and even better are the false alternatives to common software. Instead of Microsoft Office, Adobe Photoshop, and Illustrator, we have open source alternatives like LibreOffice, GIMP, and Krita. Common software used on Windows also lives in Linux, like Blender, a program proudly proclaimed as free and open source software. Give it a try today. There is no harm in trying it as we have live USBs. It is completely free, and if you don't like it, you can always go back to Windows, although you should perhaps dual boot and dip your feet in to see how you like it.